No justice, no peace. Police brutality, noise pollution, or you put a mock AED on him. Post-traumatic stress are just three of the many subjects the students in Margaret Noble's art class focused on for their art projects. But none of these students touched a paintbrush or pencil to create their art. They made their artwork one line of computer code at a time. Noble, an artist herself, teaches the 12th grade art and technology class at San Diego's High Tech High. This is the first year she's taught writing computer code for an art class. She says the theme of the class and coming exhibition called Unfamiliar Landscapes was inspired by the relationship between the students and their computer code. Code is sort of an unfamiliar landscape and they're navigating this technology for the first time, but we also thought it would really open the doors for a ton of other topics. For many of the students, this was their first time programming. After the initial challenges of having to deal with this sea of black and white text, uh, they, they, they acclimated pretty well. It was definitely a different world having to learn how to program first. They used a programming language called processing. It's designed for artists, but don't let that fool you. All of the normal art making issues still apply. Design, color, content, context. Noble shows off pictures some students made by writing programs. These are programs that they wrote to aid in creative drawing. So they learned how to manipulate using a tablet, the brush stroke from the computer. They learned they could write code to change. Was there a thick stroke? Was there a thin stroke? Was it spinning in a circle? Did it do a semicircle? When did it change colors? From semicircles to much more involved programming, the students leapt ahead. Brandon Sade isn't an art student. In fact, he wants to be a San Diego firefighter. Brandon says learning computer code was tough. When I first started, I hated coding because it was so difficult. And then slowly as I got better and more experienced with it, it started getting easier for me. Brandon's art uses a camera attached to the computer. The computer interprets the silhouette of whoever is standing within its view and then fills that silhouette with a fire that grows and fades away in unison with the sound of a crackling log. He says it's a visual metaphor for the post-traumatic stress that first responders can suffer. The fire slowly builds. It weakens over time, but it never goes away. For Brandon, this represents how PTSD can be ever-present, and if untreated, the fire within will burn hotter and longer. Chloe Bearfelt, Brooklyn Bucky, and Deshaun Lamel pick the sensitive topic of police brutality and the L.A. riots. They wrote a program that tries to illustrate how rioters behaved, how the police behaved, and how each reacted to each other. It's a hypnotic piece of perpetually running video. Rioters are represented by red dots traveling across the frame and leaving a slowly vanishing trail of destruction behind them. Blue dots, representing the police, pop in and out, covering up the rioters bit by bit. Both the red and the blue never vanish, metaphor for one never stopping the other. Chloe says working on this helped her see today's racial unrest in a much broader light. So with like researching and with finding these things out, I realize that it's bigger than just Michael Brown, it's bigger than just Eric. Brooklyn says her team's artwork also shows how scared they are that more riots could happen. The Los Angeles riots happened because it was a reaction to police brutality and we just, we're kind of almost like scared that another instance is going to happen like this. But for art teacher Margaret Noble, confronting fears and learning how to take risks is part of the course. They're in high school, right? So it's like, so it's how do you give an experience where even if you know you're not a major, you're willing to take risks? Risks they took. Some of them wanted bigger kind of global international topics and some of them were very specific to the local, like the LA riots. Those are all questions that painters and sculptors grapple with every day, Noble says. But computers are so young as art, many wonder when the unfamiliar landscape of programming is the best form. And when do you, when do you use computer programming to make an artwork, right? And I think in some, we're still learning because we are an experimental lab. Matt Bowler, KPBS News. Now we need to fix this so it's not like mm -hmm. over the edge. But then you'll see the problem. If you were to match this up, so this matches here, this matches here, just in that space. But I think we're going to have it in preview form.